Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. Today we're going to take a look at the image that I'm working on for the RG353M, the latest device from Anbernic. I'm not going to show and play every single system right now. This is going to be a quick overview of what's currently here and what's set up and what's coming. Let's just jump right into it. So here you've got the options menu. This is your file manager. This is your OTA updates. This is your Bluetooth connection wizard. You can enable or disable remote services like SSH here. Another file manager. Fix permissions, you want to run this after an OTA update just to make sure everything is working properly. This will show you your IP address. For PS1 games, if you have a bunch of multi-disc games, you want to generate M3U files to launch them. You can mount a USB drive through the USB-C. And this will connect you to Wi-Fi. Now you can switch between SD1 and SD2. Because this has two cards, it's obviously advised to just use SD1 for internal and SD2 for external. NTFS, FAT32, and XFAT are currently supported. You can toggle Wi-Fi on and off here as well. This will just show you your CPU temperatures and set the frequency for you in this option menu here, or this uh, CPU script menu. And here we've got Kodi, Portmaster, and Theme Master, which will download OTA themes. Just want to give everybody a quick overview of the systems. I'll try a couple, but I'm not going to sit here and do every single one right now. That's more of a deep dive thing, and I'm in the... It's definitely in a RC stage, but it, I wouldn't call it perfectly stable yet because I haven't had a chance to test everything. So as you can see, CPS has no issues. This is the same chipset as the V, the P, the 503, so it's going to run pretty much exactly the same as those would. Of course, this also has a touchscreen and Android, but I very much like the form factor of the MP, the M, the 351M. They feel like a, a very premium device, and I, I really enjoy holding them, playing with them. And these new joysticks are very awesome. So I want to give a big shout-out to Anbernic for that. Now, for those of you that don't know, when using HDMI, you got to change the emulator settings for standalone Muppin or Muppin. Generally speaking, widescreen for HDMI is what you want to use, and then on the device itself, it's not so relevant per se. I mean, it works. 
Wars. I'm not going to make you guys watch the entire intro, but as you can see, N64 is working fine. Like I said, this video is more of like a 10 to 15 minute overview of the systems that are here. I'm going to test out a few of them, but not tons. We'll do Saturn real quick as well. For anyone who does not know, this is Liquid Kids from the arcade as a Saturn port or a Saturn game, and this is my favorite game, and Saturn is also my favorite console. The color in this is just insane. You'll see what I mean right away. I really like it. So if you have the RG503, the Aya Air, or an OLED TV at home, if you play that game on an OLED display, the colors look absolutely amazing. I picked the wrong game. I do not want copyright issues. Welcome back to the stage of history. Versus Sotitia. Battle one, fight! <laughs> Ah! 
That was using RetroArch. As you can see, it works all right. We know the limitations here. God of War is not going to work. GTA, you can probably get away with frame skip one or two. Most of the easier to run games work fine. So I'd say probably about 65, 70% of the PSP library is going to work good. And the rest is going to have to be some sacrifices like frame skip. For PSP, start and select our exit. I don't currently have a way to enter the menu setup. I am looking into it, but I don't think you really need to do that anyways. If you want to use frame skip, you just need to plug in a keyboard and enable frame skip. I would not go over 1x, though. Otherwise, you know, it's not really a good gameplay experience. We have Coleco and the ColecoVision Super Game Module available here this is using a a special core made by the uh, Coleco dev himself or the uh, Coleco VC or VS I believe it's called the standalone emulator he made a core that was never officially released but he released it as like a test version on the website and it does work so I'm using it You get the idea. The uh, theme being used here is Switch by JetUp. It's got a bunch of extra systems added for Retro Arena specifically because I support a lot of stuff. So if you put ROMs in every single folder in the build and then you change to a different theme, you may find that there's several systems that are not themed in that particular emulation station theme. That's the reason why. The Konami and Tiger LCD games, especially on the RG503 screen, look absolutely beautiful. I'll show you what I mean, but you need the artwork pack as well.
just to give you a quick idea, like I said, it looks great on the OLED screen. And this pretty much brings us back to where we started. So as you can see, we got the latest version of RetroArch here. If you, when you're in a game, start and select at the same time twice will exit the game and pressing L3, R3 will bring you into the RetroArch menu. So now if we just press shutdown and eject the SD card, When we reboot, it should bring us into Android. It'll take a moment for the HDMI to kick in. I think it might have to actually be inside of Android first. I can see the Android logo on my device screen right now. I'm actually booted into Android right now with the HDMI connected, and I have no picture on this screen here. So I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, the Linux part is working fine, which is Retro Arena, but there's going to be some stuff needed to tweak in Android, obviously. I'm going to end the video here because this is very early in the build. I just wanted to show you guys what I was working on. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.